Blessings, blessings, blessings everybody out there in the universe. My name is Sean Myrie and I'm your host of the Down to Earth Podcast. Tonight, we got a great artist coming on. We got Laura Tafanum coming through. Bless up to all of you. Respect. Right on time. Gonna send out that spaceship. I waste that down to earth. Hello, down to earth. Hi. Thank you for having me. How are you? No problem. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I say this to everybody. Introduce yourself to the universe, to those who may not know who you are. Hello, my name is Lord Sanifam, and I'm a rapper and a singer from Toronto, but originally from Cameroon. Yeah. Oh, so oh. like, yeah. <laughs> how, how long have you been doing like your music for, like really taking it serious, your art? Uh, taking it serious, I would say probably 2020, the end of 2020. Oh, okay. So like what's some of your musical inspirations? What, like, what really inspired you to get into doing music? Um, what inspired me? Uh, I think just having it around the house. Like when I was growing up and stuff, I would move, like my family would move like every three years to another country. And okay. Living with one parent and have like nannies and stuff like that. So my dad would give us this like CD case with all these different uh, genres, but mainly pop music. And we would just kind of get to know a lot of different international music. It was always international because we were living all over the place. So like the, you're saying since you've been all over the experience of like when it's time for you to like go on tour and do like other things like networking music, like where would you want to like go to networking music because you've been around? Where's a good place you think would be? Uh, I've never been to the UK and that's a huge goal of mine. Um, mm. uh, I also, I'm super random. Like I have little weird goals. Like I'm like, I've always wanted to be like a live performer and I'm like, I'll feel like I'm lit if I'm doing like a festival in Ibiza one day, like, you know, that's <laughs> that's someplace I'd want to do. That could happen. So like right now, the feedback you've been getting from your peers, how, how is that? It's been great. I see Roman in the comments and <laughs> I'm a fan of his. So I love that, you know, I get good, good feedback from, I get good feedback from a lot of artists that I've connected with that I'm actually a fan of. So that's, that's, that's what means the most to me kind of right now. That, that's good because you need the networking. And like I was talking to Roman, you need people to do features. And that's how more spotlight comes to each artist. But when people see people working with each other, it, it's just interesting, right? Yeah. So do you have any new projects right out, like right now? I'm actually, uh, I'm performing this coming Friday at a, a showcase where Ro Roman's actually... Um, uh, premiering his video, but I'll be performing a song called I Met mm -hmm. with another artist that is featuring on it. He's a Latin artist and it's going to be Latin trap sounding. Um, and it's going to be uh, the first single on my upcoming rap project this year called International Bitch. So <laughs> oh, that's, something. that's a different type of name. So if you have like the chance to work with like a producer or artist right now who's like, you know, bubbling out there, who would you work with, want to work with? Locally or internationally? International. Let's go international. Oh, oh, internationally, right now? You know, I actually, I really like this uh, group in the UK called Western. Like, they have okay. a dope sound that I like. So internationally, I'd probably say Western. Um, if I had to pick, like, someone in the US or something, I, I couldn't think of someone right <laughs> that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just based on like what's what I've been hearing recently. But if it's like of my all time favorites, hey, let's reach for the stars, like I should collaborate with Rihanna. <laughs> oh, okay, Rihanna, that's a, that's a good one. That's a big, big, big one. So um, right now that like everything's opening up more and people could go out there and perform, are you excited to perform like finally, like do some more networking out there like in the flesh? Absolutely. That's going to be my main focus this year is uh, networking, showcases and festivals, you know, performances and artist development primarily. Yeah. That's good. I like hearing that. A lot of people don't even say that word anymore, like artist development. So tell us about this artist development, like, you know, the process. Um, 
I like to think of myself as someone who knows me pretty well. So I know my weaknesses and I, I want to work on them, right? That's I good. don't have uh, a whole lot of performing experience. So I want to get that. I don't, yes. I don't have um, a lot of experience like negotiating uh, yeah. brands or with negotiating uh, labels and contracts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I want to learn that this year. I want to learn all the things that it actually takes to make it a career this year. So. See, the, at least you, you overstand the, the, the different levels, of, uh, like, you know, to, to get to where you want to be. Because a lot of people, they, they just think it's just all about the, the glitz and the glamour and it's a business, right? That's, it's a bad word for some people, but it's music, right? And it's business. The music you create and it could be fun and it's supposed to be fun. It's your art. But then there's the business to sell or, you know, market yourself so you could get brands and get uh, sponsorships and get out there of commercials, features, right? And everyone should be thinking about it like a business because music is expensive to do. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you should be thinking about trying to make that back. Otherwise, yes. what are you doing? <laughs> it's very expensive. <laughs> So. You're, you're right. You, you've hit a good point. Like, if you're paying all this money for a studio, right, and then you get your stuff mixed and mastered, and you're paying money for a video, don't you want don't you want your 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 product to reach very far? So, uh, I, we have so much artists. There's so much great artists, but not enough artists that are on a certain level to overstand. Like how you're saying it, I haven't heard many say that artist development and how I need to uh, get better at performing because a lot of people run away from the performing. Like now we're going to see the arenas open. Who's good? You know, a lot of people run away from performing, but at the same time, being new in any industry, a lot of people also don't know how to get the performances they want to perform to. A lot of things That's are like true. experience, but I think a lot of people run away from developing their craft. That's what a lot yeah. of people um, in my opinion. Well, you shouldn't. You shouldn't try to run away from developing your craft. No one is perfect. Everybody makes uh, mistakes. Like even I, when I first done my first performance, you're nervous, and after that, you start to get better as you do more performances, right? And even the twenty fifth, because I'm performing a while myself, I will be nervous. But you practice makes perfect. You have to practice. You can't cheat. I'm so excited for that now that you've said that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be there to get a better slot. <laughs> <laughs> well, people, I, 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 I'm going to tell everybody, make sure you are sharp because I when, I, when I'm ready for something, I concentrate on it. You get what I mean? I just concentrate on it and make sure that your, your show, you're moving. You're moving all the time. Bring the energy. Absolutely. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to part of the artist of because I've only done one showcase in the past and um, mm -hmm. well I've done like performances but one showcase and I kind of felt frozen because I was trying to feed off the audience reaction rather than just you know doing what I had prepared and it was yes. a crowd that knew nothing about anything about me so they were just kind of mm -hmm. watching what I'm doing and not reacting so it's like so this is good this is like part of that development that I need and how do you feel about like the ladies now, the women in like urban music, uh, how the showcase now? Do you feel like you're getting a little bit more respect than usual? Like, do you feel like you're getting more, a little bit more spotlight than, and even just seeing other fellow ladies? Like, do you feel that that's going on right now? More spotlight? Yeah. Uh, I I I do, in a way, feel like you know ladies are getting more spotlight. Uh, ladies are also doing more right now yeah. we have we have been in a pandemic as well so i don't even i don't i don't even like to think of it as a ladies and guys thing too much because mm. then everybody has an opinion about that as well and stuff uh, you know what though i have my opinions and the guys been running it for so long who cares respect to all the guys it's time for a lot of the females to they need more balance right now because there's a lot of talent what people haven't seen from the ladies so now it's t it need a balance because you know it's a man whatever run industry or male dominated there's thousands of our uh, male artists respect to you all but like i'm saying we need to spotlight the ladies more right but i say spotlight uh, i don't i don't even just say spotlight people because 
ladies. Um, I say spotlight anything good or anyone that's good. hard. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's true. What I mean, because putting in work or sounds good. Because if you're putting in putting work, work. sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my. <laughs> that's true. But there's a lot of ladies who put in work and not getting the spotlight. I know. I've seen them. There's a lot of ones who put in work over the years and years, and they're not getting still the spotlight, but they don't care because I, they're somewhere else. I don't they're somewhere have, So I don't even have an, I don't want to get into like politics of what I believe. Uh, yeah, you don't have to get into the politics, but you being a young artist now, do you see yourself like doing other type of genres? Because you do hip hop and you, you sing, right? Would you ever try to do like uh, reggae? or anything like that i that's dance i was in the studio on tuesday and we were working on a song where the hook is reggae and i'm singing and there's a, there's a guy named punisher sound who's on the hook and he's literally doing reggae just as you said that i was like wow that's funny that's but, good um, that's good i am gonna do other genres because even though i released rap first i started off as a singer songwriter like singing and song oh, that was that's uh, good. 11 and then playing guitar since I was 16 and then oh. I just like to do I like to write in every genre so when I played my my friends my song sugarcane before I released it they're like oh you have to put that out like they were bothering me about it so I put it out first and now people mm -hmm. think oh, I'm like primarily a rapper but it's just what I have most of out right now that's good though because see yeah. what that info you just give that means you we're going to see some surprises because you know how to play instruments too. So you're a well-rounded artist, you're a writer, and you could play your own instruments or range. That's hard to find like nowadays what's promoted. You got, I mean, people might have their talent. Maybe they're not saying anything, but that's great to know Absolutely. that you're doing all that. So yeah. do, um, do you like have any new, like plan to put out any other vi visuals? Like I've seen that video like what you have now. Do you have anything you wish to put out soon, like an idea? Because summertime's coming and everybody- Ironically, you know, I was supposed to go to DR this month to shoot the video for I Met with my friend Sosa in DR because it's going to be Latin Trap. And then mm -hmm. the geographer who I'm currently with here right now chose to renew <laughs> passport late. So everyone uh, is ready to go and the videographer doesn't have a passport. Oh, so you gotta get that. You gotta get that done. You gotta get that done. So, <laughs> uh, I am gonna do other videos, and I might even like think of a different uh, strategy for that particular song out of DR. But um, I definitely need to do other videos because I have like I have more songs than videos ready right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I like that though. That you still you're ready. You're ready. You just have to have like a team. That's it. It looks like you have a team. You're in the studio, you're working, uh, you, you're writing, you're, you know what you want, you want to do more shows. So, like, if you were to give advice to even a younger artist coming up, and you, because you, you have the experience and you still are learning, what, 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 what kind of advice would you send out to, like, somebody? A younger artist? Um, honestly, I would say do. Like, don't overthink too much. Like, be working on stuff. Like... Be working on your craft, be working on mm -hmm. things, and be be networking with people that are trying to do what you're trying to do, because That's you know true. you might not get like all the information you need to make it work from one person. You'll get like mm -hmm. five percent from one person, five percent from the next person, and then you'll have this full puzzle of how to get where you want to go. But um, you'll you'll still need to be working on your craft. That's always my advice. <laughs> That's my major. I like that. I like that's true. It's true. You work on your craft because when you go yeah. to those shows, to me, I judge the artists, not just the videos and all that stuff online. It's going to the shows because we go to the shows, me and my brother, down to earth, and yeah. see the artists actually perform to see, like, when you perform, that's your bag in the future because people then say, oh, I want to go to your show, Lara's show. Absolutely. I want to see her perform because she's great. She's exciting. So I will go to support her. That's what... That's what people need to see. And and I would I would always advise even even before this show, <laughs> work on the music. Because <laughs> I don't yeah. want to go to a show with bad music. Period. Uh, 
<laughs> you see, you're a realist. You're a realist. You're a realist. I'm just honest because a lot of people don't like to be honest, and I, I can't take it. It's like, mm. oh yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, da, 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 da. and you like listening to the music, and people just never seem to want to improve. Sometimes, so it's just like, you know, <laughs> you're ready. This is you're ready for the <laughs> You're ready for it. I see. I see big things. Then, if he, the way right. how you are putting it up, I see big things coming. I see we're big writing. things coming. We're writing. We're working. We're writing. We're recording. We're working on the sound. You know, you don't even need to see me. You're gonna hear the sound, and if you look like, you won't even care what I look like, right? Yeah. <laughs> but you know, there's nothing wrong with that already. <laughs> So you know what I mean? <laughs> that's another thing. Let's be straight up. I'll be straight up. A big thing for the industry is the look. It's how you look, your presentation, even if it's like out of this world. The point is a lot of people gravitate to that because a lot of people are visual now besides just listening. And that's what so, avoiding the female right. conversation. Com <laughs> female conversation. <laughs> yeah, that's how that came up. Because it's but, like, oh people are getting the spotlight people are not all stuff i mean that's that's primarily why uh for an, um, in a while in serrano you know people were focused more on improving their looks than the music mm -hmm. wasn't getting better and i how long can you follow someone's looks mm -hmm. yeah yeah you're right your look how journey that we're following your musical journey are we following your lookbook like yeah it's true. And you know what? As everybody starts to look the same sometimes or similar, then people are going to pick out who's really the ones who have the, 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 the like the, that talent. What? It's the Nicki is, Minaj what? starter pack, but Nicki Minaj mm. had bars. <laughs> oh, I like what you said there. Like, <laughs> That's all you have we, to say. Can you we remember that part? Nicki Minaj <laughs> had bars. So. Yeah. It's the Nicki Minaj starter pack. Oh, that hurt me a lot. Sorry, <laughs> but yeah, you know what? I'm I really listen though to the li the the lyrics and the delivery and to see if this person's trying to sound like this person or they sound like themselves, especially with the the rap, right? And I find, for example, the 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 men, a lot of them, not all of them, but a big percentage, I I, I don't care, sound the same because they follow this technology called auto tune. And then it's making them all sound the same, right? A lot yeah, of them. And they follow the auto tune because they think that it can. A lot of them think it can replace the lyrics as well. In that case, you know what I mean? Yes, you're right. You're you, right. You can't even make out the words sometimes, but they're trying to give you a sound, and then you the song ends, and you don't even know what the song was about. <laughs> and then it all sounds the same to me. That's what I'm saying. But then there's some people who know how to use it. There's people who do know how to use it, and it's how you use it. You get yeah. what I mean? Like it's too much of one thing is not good. Put it that way. <laughs> Excuse me? It's the people that are working on their craft. You're right. But you know the funny thing? Even some people, when we think they haven't worked on their craft, it's because they have the power of promotion and networking. And we might say, what is that? But they do get through. Absolutely. I see them. That's <laughs> work ethic mm -hmm. will get you very far. You don't have to have talent sometimes if your work ethic is enough. But as an audience member, it would be nice. Yeah. It's true. Facts, facts. So, like, um, I would like to ask you, your inspiration, your musical, like, some of your, like, you know, heroes to get get a taste of I, what you, you um, grew up listening to. Oh, okay. Well, I grew up, like, in a lot of countries, but I would primarily listen to pop music growing up just because my parents would give us, like, the artists that were worldwide in the CD things. Mm. The first like visual CD I had was Michael Jackson number ones, oh. one where it took you through like the videos from like a, the "Don't Stop Till You Get Enough" to like yeah yeah you rock my world times. So that was like the first one I had. Then we got like two Madonna CDs, and then we got Shania Twain, and then we got John, oh. and so and I was living in like Africa, Haiti, Congo, mm. and listening to these same artists because wherever we moved when you turn on the main station, they're all playing mm. artists. So I was like, oh, like music is really international. You can like, you can make it internationally music if you're really good, like everybody, yes. everybody people. Cause I thought I would move to another country and they wouldn't know who my favorite singers are, but yes. like the ones that were the greatest, right? So I was like, oh, okay, like that's really cool. And so pop music was my primary love. And then um, 
when I became a songwriter, I just wanted to be able to write in every genre. So I would write in country even before rap, because my dad, mm. <laughs> my dad's favorite music genre, country, country, um, and then you know, the Nicki Minaj thing influenced me a lot in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I would write some stuff and share it for like some of my friends that felt like they were, and if they were like females. They were kind of discouraging. Mm. I felt like oh, I just don't have like you know that voice or something like that, and then you kind of grow out of it and stuff as you get older. But yeah, my influences were like pop stars. Like, oh, but anything, I, and you are star coming. I know you're star coming. You are a star. <laughs> Sorry to say, but yeah. Anything else you want to tell the the universe before we come off the spaceship, Lara? I know I've mentioned my rap tape, International Bitch, coming out, but I'm going to drop a singing tape, too. I don't know which one's going to come first. It, it'll probably be the rap one. I'll drop a singing tape as well, um, so that mm. I get the full scope of, like, what I can do. And I'll finally be collaborating with people. And my most, one of my most exciting collaborations is going to be Roman. I'm your biggest fan. Ah, uh, much respect, much respect. Much respect for coming through, Lara. Thank you Family. for having me. That's it, right? <laughs> Respect. We'll see you the 25th, performing live and direct. Toronto Connects. Lara Tafanum. Check her out. Subscribe to all her channels, digital platforms. Bless and up. I will absolutely see you there as well. I'm excited to see your performance. Much respect, Lara. <laughs>